Well, welcome. And it jumped to this scene. Welcome to uh, Talking Volleyball today. Uh, I'm Steve Hammond, and I'm going to be kind of the host in the background making the technical stuff work. But we've got some great folks with us today. Let's see them all. BJ, how about doing the introductions? Because you brought Car Carmelo to us. Yeah, this is, uh, I, this is selfish for me. Um, as we start, we being uh, Wisconsin Green Bay, we're, we're thinking about this topic that uh, we're talking about today, which is data volley. And, uh, and I just, I happen to know Carmelo through, um, through social media and mm -hmm. a fellow volleyball uh, person. And he is uh, a, a self-proclaimed non-expert. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. In, yeah. uh, <laughs> in data volley, but he's, he is probably the, the, the perfect sort of entry point for, for me. And, and I'm sure for anybody who's watching this, just to kind of learn about, um, learn about the, the program. And uh, Carmilla, why don't you just, why don't you start by just telling us who you are and how you're in volleyball and, and what you're doing and, and how you got here. Oh, well, um, thank you for that intro. Glad to be here. Um, so volleyball, funny enough for me, just uh, started a little bit later on in life, about, I don't know, 20, 21 years old, um, played beach, uh, played some, on some sand courts with my church, and I happened to hammer uh, an overpass uh pretty hard and i i thought to myself huh well maybe i am pretty good at this and i wasn't i had no idea about the rest of the game and uh until i took some classes at a, a junior college i found that um i really loved volleyball it was actually like probably five of my classes at uh, Modesto junior college here in california and um from then on um I don't think a year uh, has gone by without me being involved in some way uh, with volleyball. Um, uh, my wife uh, was a volleyball player in high school and played in junior college, and she was asked to coach at a local high school. And uh, I asked if I could assist. You know, I've always um, I've always felt uh, a need to coach. I always felt like I, I could do that. Um, and volleyball just was a different opportunity. Uh, originally, I was a swim coach. I played water polo for five years, um, but volleyball was just something I really enjoyed doing all the time. Um, and so after a couple of years coaching uh, at a local school, uh, I got invited to become a club coach, and I believe that's 15 years ago. Um, every two to four years, I bounced around from one area club to another, um, progressively learning that, um, you know, I, I didn't know anything, you know, as, as you go on, you know, you can, you can coach for 10 years, 12 years and, um, and realize the way that you've been doing it was wrong the entire time. And, uh, that's kind of what happened with me is, uh, uh, I went from, from thinking I knew how to train to, uh, finding volleyball coaches and trainers online and, um, meeting some other coaches that were winning at, incredibly high levels uh with uh, club volleyball and um it was just exciting to to see how they were training the skills that for you know about again 10 years uh i struggled with you know i, I couldn't there was no retention um with uh, my athletes and so i went from uh those area teams and uh funny enough when the uh the club before rage volleyball which, which is who i'm with now dissolved um, no other club was willing to give me a shot, uh, and, um, except for the top club in the area, which is rage. And, um, in my first, uh, three years with rage, uh, I learned from some of their top coaches, uh, learned, took a lot from, you know, volleyball coaches and trainers and, uh, our, our group, uh, think tank BJ. Um, and, and honestly, like, uh, the growth and caliber and, quality of athlete um, and team uh, that I had uh, qualified for nationals the last two years, which is something I never, never dreamed of, you know? Um, and from there uh, that provided me the opportunity to network 
at the collegiate level. Uh, and uh, I was introduced to um, Coach Gibbons and uh, Corey Rex, the assistant coach for the University of the Pacific. Um, and I, I, I love stats, I love numbers, um, and I was good at typing. Um, I didn't really have a, a ton more in a, a ton of experience in that area, um, but I was willing. And I think more importantly, I was free uh, uh, to, to just intern and learn, you know, and, <clears throat> and not knowing anything about uh, the, the uh, Division One culture, collegiate volleyball, having no clue about any of that stuff. Um, uh, I, I just thought to myself, you know, just, just jump in, uh, see what you can learn, see what you can glean. And um, the things that I've learned um, has improved uh, my coaching exponentially um, with, uh, with club volleyball. Um, with club volleyball, and I, uh, and I find myself now in my uh, third year with the University of the Pacific, still doing uh, analytics, um, and, you know, doing them, I, I think, at, at a level that uh, does help the team, helps the coaches, and uh, I think, um, you know, just is it like, like I think something you said before, just is ingrained in the culture uh, of what we're trying to build. Um, and Coach Gibbons has a master's in analytics, so um, he knows pretty quickly if my numbers are wrong, you know, and he'll let me know. Um, but again, that's just kind of a really nice mentor to have um, because he'll tell me how to fix it, you know, um, and uh, just just being involved in that level and uh, experiencing, um, you know, what what uh, what that offers is is pretty incredible. And <coughs> excuse me, and that's where I find myself today, uh, 15 years after I started coaching. Uh, you know, here in California, uh, I find myself um, being, you know, knowledge, at least knowledgeable about several aspects of uh, of coaching volleyball and um, the latest of which is uh, really trying to figure out what these numbers that people seem to want, uh, what they, what they mean, you know, and what's important uh, to one, our program and two, uh, to trickle down what would be important to me um, moving forward. So uh, yeah, no data volley. Um, uh, I'm, the, I'm the coordinator of analytics for the University of the Pacific Women's Volleyball Team, and um, it's it's been a journey, you know, and just uh, uh, being able to travel with the team, being able to to meet some amazing people, um, and and learning that uh, you know there's there's a whole lot of noise out there when it comes to numbers, and um, just trying to figure out um, what's important. Um, sometimes is the is the hardest part, you know. Um, but again, just have a, a really great mentor with uh, Coach Gibbons, um, and he's very focused and um, he's very task oriented and with what he wants. And so, uh, I've enjoyed it, um, and you know, I really wouldn't replace it with anything. It was, it's pretty awesome, and still mid season right now, um, and we have a shot at the postseason. So it just makes me want to do my job even better. So yeah, that's where I am. So what, uh, let's just dive right into it. What exactly is data volley? I, I mean, it's been around for some time. I want to say 10 years, 15 years. Um, I, I know little bits about it. I've seen some things that it does just, just kind of wrap it up for us. What is it? What is it? What does it do? Well, uh, Data Volley is a, a software program that um, comes out of Italy, um, and uh, it, it really helps with real-time analytics uh, to, to make those in-game adjustments quickly. Um, it can also be used for scouting. It can also be used for, um, you know, giving, giving you some practice numbers. Um, really, um, it's, it's really versatile to, to program or sorry, to code um, what, what's important to you and your program. Um, data Volley itself, um, to me, was when I first approached it, 
uh, was being used more as a scouting tool, um, more as a training tool to um, help our hitters and our defense um, prepare for the next team. Um, but it's evolved into more of a game time uh, game time tool to uh, help us adjust to what the other team is doing, um, and also to understand that you know, <coughs> excuse me, that when numbers go south, uh, you have to make those in-game adjustments uh, quickly before the game gets out of hand. Um, but Data Volley, it, it um, it's just a program that. You're, where you're able to code in what's happening in real time. Um, and that code, once it's scored, uh, once it's entered, uh, gets broken down into various skills, various percentages, uh, ratings, et cetera, um, that coaches can, can view uh, and make decisions on um, based on what you see, you know? Um, and every coder is different. Um, every team is different with what they're looking for. and um, again, like it, it could be one of those things where the, uh, the code itself can, uh, give you an encyclopedia of information, um, that you may or may not need, or it can be very specific to one or two things, uh, that are important to your game plan and, and go from there. Um, but data volley for us is, um, a, a pretty, uh, invaluable tool. Uh, to just one um, train in the preseason to see who your uh, who your uh, six to nine girls you're going to go to battle with who they're going to be um, and then tracking their progress throughout the year to to make sure that they're still um, the ones that you want in the court when when it matters. So yeah, that's no, cool. Data volley, so, data volley really so during cool. a match, when when you're sitting there during a match or practice. I have the, the feeling, I've seen a couple of these different types of programs, I have the feeling you're sitting at your keyboard, you're plunking in various touches and where the ball went and what, what the results were. What, what types of output <coughs> can you get uh, from data volley? Is it all just charts and graphs? Or are we talking uh, video analysis or, or, or what, do you, what do you break down from that initial data entry? Um, I, I mean, it, it, you can organize it in any way. And that's one of the beauties, uh, uh, one of the really nice things with data volley is you can, you can have it as a basic spreadsheet. You can have it as a chart. You can have it as, um, um, you can break it down into video clips and, and go from there. You know, it, it really, uh, it, it, it's more about how you're using it versus, um, uh, and how you're using it and what you need it for. Um, like it, for, again, for scouting, you may uh, have recorded uh, a match, you know, uh, of your opponent and um, use data volley to, to code how they did in that match. Um, and you can, you know, just go through and click to various parts of the match, uh, various parts of code um, throughout the match and, and see what the skill breakdown is. Um, or you can see it as a whole, you can see it as per set. Um, scoring ranges, different things like that. Um, you can see what plays they run, um, what plays they run out of serve receive, um, and <coughs> excuse me, uh, directional um, tendencies for servers and attackers. Um, again, it's 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 really versatile, and it can be as uh, complex or as simple as you'd like. Um, but just you know, uh, yeah, I, I have a laptop on the on the sideline. Uh, I'm coding the game in real time, uh, and for Pacific. Um, it's way more of a in-game adjustment tool uh, than anything else. Yeah, that's that's mostly like when it, when it first came out. I remember hearing stories about oh yeah, data volley. Um, you know, half hour, forty five minutes after the match, and this is how long ago it was. Players were getting a DVD of their you know of all huh. their plays so that they can look at all of their touches or um, all of the opponent's touches in a specific area or, or just, you know, kind of scouting themselves so that they could <coughs> see that video. And right. now it sounds to me, it's a lot more like a programmable version of volumetrics where you can, you know, parse 
in or out the data that you need. If, if you're interested in what are the outside hitters doing in rotation one, you can, you can zoom into that section of, of, uh, video and it'll, it'll cut all that up for you and give you those highlights, uh, right. as well as the statistics and charts and graphs and stuff. Right. And over at Pacific, we use uh, Volumetrics and Data Volley. Um, Volumetrics is becoming more of a, again, training tool, practice tool, practice planning tool. Um, and Data Volley is the, is the real time uh, game adjustments that we need to do. Um, and Volumetrics, uh, funny enough, um, you get to see how accurate you are versus somebody yeah. that does uh, programming for a living off of that video. You know, you can see whether or not, um, what you're seeing is, is accurate to the numbers. Um, and at first I was happy with being within 10%, 5%, 3% of, uh, uh, what their numbers were. And as, uh, I learned how to code a little bit faster, um, be a little bit tighter on my judgments. Um, then now I'm into the, the tenths of a percent, hundredths of a percent, um, accuracy to what the volumetrics numbers are. And again, that just comes with practice, you know, uh, like, like, like we say, everything's a skill. And my first year I was just really learning as much as uh, I possibly could. Um, but now with uh, a couple of years under my belt, um, working with volumetrics, uh, data volley has become just much more versatile and uh, a lot more focused for us, uh, at Pacific, um, with uh, how we want to use it and how we can win with it, you know, as part of our program. Um, I would say um, it's hard to imagine um, not having volumetrics with data volley because um, I feel like they, they go hand in hand uh, and it would really save you a lot of time if you, if you had both. Um, but if you do like watching tons of video and coding, Specifics to um, specifics to uh, what's important to you and your team, uh, then um, I would say that's you know that that's that's something you should tailor your program to. Um, but uh, I think um, having both just is, is definitely worth the value um, from which you pay for it. So yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's great stuff. The volumetrics has become really important <laughs> to us as well. And we're constantly using it to, uh, mostly as a scouting tool, sometimes, uh, sometimes as a, as an improvement tool, I, I like, um, looking at, uh, some, uh, at a couple of things and I'll just mention a few. And I, I guess I wouldn't mind hearing some of your, um, you know, some of your important points that a couple things we've been focusing on. One is uh, serve velocity, taking our, taking our velocity up. Um, we found from volumetrics, uh, they, they rank your servers velocity and most of our servers are in the, the middle range or medium range. So we're working on getting those players to, you know, see if we can bump them up a little bit. Um, yeah. I tend to focus on uh, particularly outside hitters. Are we hitting around the fringe of the block? Are we attacking the middle of the block? Where are we, you know, where on the block are we attacking? So it, get, it can get really specific um, right. as to, you know, as to the things you're looking at. And then even against opponents, we know they like to play defense this way. Are we hitting the are we hitting the one six seam or the five six seam? Are we going four at four? Or the things like that. Um, maybe that's getting a little bit too detailed, but those are some of the things that we look at. Um, what what are some of the things that that stand out to you as important <clears throat> kind of scouting or training tools? Um, uh, I would say um, sliding out is is probably the uh, the priority, uh, for accuracy and as much gleaning as much information as you can. Um, uh, volumetrics does a great job of letting you know what, you know, what everybody's running coming out of a, a service heap. Um, but with data volley, you could be a little bit more, um, accurate to what you what you want to look for. Um, but side out percentages, point scoring to us, that's, that's the, those, those are, um, 
uh, the most important numbers to have. And uh, reason being is, um, uh, I, I guess, uh, me as a coach, I've always been scared to kind of spin the wheel. I always want my best, my perceived best server to be back on that line as, as much as possible. Um, but when the numbers show that your best server might be in rotation five, maybe that's where you start in the third, fourth, or fifth set. Um, Siding out the percentage, um, and let's see, pass, passing rating, um, all, all those things uh, to us are huge. Um, and the passing rating is just off of the serve for, for, for us. Um, and uh, again, like uh, I tried uh, at one point to be specific like yourself uh, with um, the edge of the block. That was actually something I was kind of obsessed with for uh, about a month. Um, and I actually talked with Joe Trinzi about it uh, for a little while. Like, how can I code this? Is, is there a way that I can come up with some custom code um, to let girls know if they're hitting, you know, high into the block, et cetera? Um, because that's kind of one plane uh, with data volley that um, it's not really there. Um, but again, like, uh, I found myself just working a little bit too hard and a little bit unfocused from uh, what was important to the program. And um, for us, hitting percentage, uh, point scoring, siding out, especially, and passer ratings um, are, are our biggest thing. Um, and uh, we have other coaches that chart uh, the offense and, and the plays coming out of the server seed in real time for the other team. But even that is something that we're discovering with a little bit more equipment, iPads, you know, our own mobile network, et cetera. Uh, that I could actually take off of their hands and they can focus more on, on coaching the player instead of tracking and charting. Um, and that might be something that we, we do next year. Who knows? Um, but uh, it's, it's kind of funny that you, you bring that up because that was actually one of my questions. Um, I don't know if you, if you know this, but you probably do. But John Dunning, you know, was he won a couple national championships with Pacific. And every year he comes in. Uh, he tries to rally up the girls, and, and you know, um, Greg Gibbons is, is, uh, looks to him as a mentor. Um, who doesn't? You know, dude's a genius. Um, and uh, I asked him, my, my very first question to him in our coaches' meeting was, um, how important are numbers to you? You know, and he told me at Stanford he had a staff of five people um, that did uh, data volley, various stats, uh, video breakdowns, et cetera. And every match you would be given this 96, 97 page report, uh, scouting the other team and, um, letting him know how his practices were going, um, their suggestions, things to work on, et cetera. Um, he said that he picked it up, looked on page four for about 30 seconds, and then he never touched that report ever again, you know? And, um, I, I asked him, well, what was on page four and he's just like side out numbers. That's honestly, that's what I care about more uh, than anything else. And, um, I thought that was really cool to, uh, to, to pick one of the greatest coaches of all time, you know, and, and see that, um, to him numbers, uh, honestly, just if they can get you those one or two or three points, uh, in a set at the D one level, that could mean, that can, you know, that could be the difference between a win and a loss, you know, and, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, when we, when we beat a team, like, uh, like we, like when we beat Pepperdine early this year, um, and we won 15, 13 in the fifth set, it's, it's hard not to have a, a little, a little bit of pride, uh, that, you know, your numbers affected that in a small way. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, that's exactly what it's for, you know, and if you did your job, then, you know, hopefully it's re reflected on the scoreboard. And then this time it was, it was really cool. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember saying to, uh, our, our, uh, assistant, our, our assistant one is an engineer analytical guy. And I started working on, uh, serve reception and ranking serve reception for our team and the other team. And I made the comment to him that, and I just, I would like to, I would like this to just improve us one point a game. 
And he looked right. at me and said, if we improved one point a game, we're going to win the conference. <laughs> you right. know, uh, a, a one point in a game is a huge improvement. And I was, I was pretty floored by that, but he had done some research on that and, and just looking at, um, and, wow. you know, how much of a change that really makes, uh, if you can make those small improvements. So I, I've, I've really taken that to heart and, and pay a lot of attention to those, to those little things like you're talking about. Right. Right. And I would say that, um, again, like data, you, it, it can really be overwhelming, you know, like you can, you can learn some things about it. You can uh, go in there and, and just realize that player A or player B is, is not doing what you think that they're doing or they're not who they think they are. Um, and you can bring in them some hard numbers to show and, and back you up. Uh, but at the same time, like, I, I feel like you need to find those one, two or three things um, that's going to be important to you more than the rest, you know, and then and then pour into that. Um, when I first started uh, Data Volley with Pacific, um, I was doing uh, serving zones to uh, one of the nine zones. I, I learned about the nine zones, when I, you know, when I first started, uh, and then the four sub zones of the nine zones. Um, and I was coding in the different uh, types of serve, um, the velocity of the serve, um, rating the pass, uh, which zone the pass went to, sub zone. And my, my line of code was ginormous, you know, just for one play. Um, but I thought to myself, hey, that, that's amazing that I can code all that. Um, but when I brought that to Coach Gibbons, he's just like, I just want to know if it was a good pass or not. You know, I don't need to know the type of the serve. I don't need to know this. I don't need to know that. But I would love you to focus your energy on, you know, um, the, the accuracy of the pass, the quality of the pass. Um, and, uh, did we side out? And, uh, so my code went from, you know, maybe a hundred, 150 characters down to maybe eight, you know, something super simple. Um, but it, it, it's funny, uh, uh, when that happened though, my accuracy just shot through the roof, you know, and, um, I, you know, again, I, it, it's what was important to him. Um, I learned something from it as well from, you know, not making things more complex than they need to be. And again, just kind of realizing this year that I was, I was just coding a whole lot of noise um, that again, kind of like the Dunning story, you, he, Greg just wanted page four. You didn't, you didn't need the other uh, 95 pages in that report. Um, and just knowing that it, it helps me do my job a, a lot better. So, yeah. Is, is there any, anything, and again, I'm at the, you know, beginning player level for the most part or early player level. But um, is there anything, can, one of the things I'm, I'm thinking about working with my, my guys this year is um, to de-emphasize um, looking at the block and to emphasize looking at where there's open space. And I just, I'm drawing that from driving school. You know, the first thing mm -hmm. they teach in driving school is don't look at the pole, look at where you're going to go. And right. um, uh, do they do the players get any feedback on developing the skill to find what's open, including what what the floor coverage is behind the block? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would say that with with uh, that's more of a combination between data volley and volley metrics. And with the volley metrics part of it, um, that is really more of the scouting tool that we use in order to know where to attack. Um, in the moment, um, we're teaching um, our, our players to recognize the difference, you know, obviously the difference between an in-system, out-of-system um, set and, and decisions and options to make in, in those situations. And right now, um, it, it's less about where to hit the ball uh, and more about how you're hitting it um, to, to tool off that block and, and to, to get a point that way. Um, Pacific. Uh, is a pretty short team this year. You know, I think our tallest player is six three. Uh, we have two players that are six three, and um, but, but you you have a, a lot of girls that have a ton of competitiveness, um, ton of athleticism, so um, they can compete at the highest levels. Um, but you know, if you're five ten and you're you're hitting into a six six block, 
um, it, it's less about what's open and more about uh, what choices you make on how to hit that ball. Um, and um, again, that, that's something you can crunch into numbers. That's something that you can uh, show directionally um, what the best option is to do there. Um, but we've found, again, depending on the personnel of your team and, and the culture of your team, uh, you just want to really focus on um, what your strengths are and uh, how, how to bring how to bring the most out of uh, your offense. So again, it's 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 based more um, our scouting is based more on um, choices you make in that situation, um, when to swing hard, when to be crafty and tip and go off speed, um, and, and less about you need to hit this zone on this play. Um, because again, like there's so many things that can happen in that situation that um, take that away, or that, that maybe you're off balance and it's not even an option anymore. Um, and uh, maybe that's a that's a um, misconception some people have about a a tool like this that can be directional and, and can show you charts, uh, heat maps, and stuff like that about where percentages of where the defense has a hole, um, but uh, I would say that it again, it's more in in that moment. Are you making the right choice uh, to to score that point, or are you pulling back because you're not sure? You know. So uh, yeah. again, we're a young, competitive, athletic team, and for us, uh, those choices right now are much more important than um, where the defense uh, is is, made, is leaving a, a spot open on the court, um, and. You know, again, it's just something to learn from, something to bring back to your own teams and and, uh, and go from there. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks. That's good. You're welcome. Welcome. I was just looking up our relative uh, uh, difference uh, while, while you guys were talking in RPI. You guys are a little bit ahead of us, uh, but we're, <laughs> we're on uh, we're on a similar page. Let's just let's, let's put it that way. So we're 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 on similar teams. I started hearing you talk about height, um, saying you're <laughs> short. I thought, well, I wonder, I wonder where they fall. Um, I don't know that we even have a player that's six three. Uh, maybe there's one that's approaching that, uh, and that that's just what wait what what made me go and kind of check it out. But uh, yeah, that's neat. Um, so I guess here's my question. We talked a little bit about this already, um, the important, uh, important statistics. Lacking something like a data volley, what, what would be the first thing that you would track in a match? You know, if you, if you could just do one thing or maybe two, um, what would you use in a match to, to figure out how are we going to win or how are we going to make this better for us? Um, for me, uh, again, like, uh, I have different philosophies than, uh, than, uh, coach Gibbons does. Um, but, uh, just seeing what's important to the coaches at some of the highest levels in club, um, rotation tracking to me is, is probably the, the most important, um, with who's point scoring for your side, you know, who's holding serve. Um, and the other thing is what, what plays do the other team run out of, how to serve receive, you know, if, if again, like, um, I don't have data volley at the club level, you know, it's not something that, um, is feasible. And, um, I don't know if it actually would be useful in a, in a real time setting like that. Um, but, uh, I, I would definitely be uh, with a pen and paper, um, be tracking, um, uh, which rotations I'm siding out at, um, the highest, uh, which rotations I'm point scoring at the highest. Um, and again, like, um, we're, what are they running coming back to us? Um, uh, we train, uh, in, in my practices, I like to, uh, to train, uh, shout out three numbers, uh, to the girls regarding, um, what place, you know, uh, they might be running or three, three terms. So I can say, uh, a red three go, um, and, you know, I'm able to, they're able to glean a lot of information off of, uh, off of those three terms, you know? Um, and again, it's just kind of something to train. Uh, and then when we do that in a uh, tournament setting, um, they uh, they get it, you know. And I, I find that that's probably one of the more important things. 
Um, but again, like um, the rotations, uh, uh, efficiency of the rotations is, is huge. Um, and funny enough, like, um, you know, uh, with the trend line stuff that, that uh, it seems to be popular once a year on volleyball coaches and trainers, um, uh, that, that kind of opened my eyes to um, why siding out and point scoring is, is so important and making sure that you have um, that information available um, <clears throat> and, and just making the decisions based off of the numbers um, versus, uh, versus what you may personally feel about uh, a player or, or your team. So uh, you, you got you to gotta balance out those two things. And um, <clears throat> just seeing uh, at Pacific uh, how they rely more on numbers than they do about um, gut instinct. Um, I think this year I'm going to be trying a little bit more on going off of the numbers that are important to me than, than what I perceive would be the best player for that situation. Yeah, I've found... Um... Oh, it's been a long time. I've gone kind of back and forth because I've been coaching some uh, club till I moved here to Arizona. I've been doing high school at a school where I, I was in the gym the other day with the basketball players after tryouts and a few of them were hanging their heads. And I'm like, hey, come out for volleyball. We were doing open gyms. We'll be playing in the spring. And, uh, oh, you know, I don't, I didn't really like volleyball very much. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, you've never seen it played the way uh, we play it. You know, and uh, I said it'd be like watching a varsity basketball team versus the gym class. You know, you're used to gym class. So come out and, you know, give it a shot, see what, see what you can do. But uh, I started using uh, solo stat only because everything else I tried, I'm too slow. I could never, well, it would take a <laughs> tremendous amount of time for me to develop the skill to do. Right. Uh, my brain doesn't work sequentially very well. So it's just, uh, you know, I even even with uh, solo stat, I, I'll, I'll make a good number of mistakes. I get caught up in the point as a coach. But as a single coach, I found it to be a pretty good tool. Because to your point, I would go back and I in my mind, I would say, what did I just observe? And then I would look at the numbers and go, that's not what I saw. But that's what I coded. Uh, and so, you know, and, and again, it's it's more about how did the point end? You know, how did it begin? How did it end? And everything in between, you're really not capturing. But, you know, for a, a club coach, that can be, be fairly handy and you can kind of look at what's going on. You know, you'll say, well, we must have missed seven serves that set. And you, you go back and look and it's like, it, it, no, it was three. And you can do that on paper. And I that's how I got started just with, you know, templates and three clipboards with following different things. Um, but uh, so, and that works great. You know, if I was telling a new coach what to do and they were trying to do it inexpensively, I'd say get one of the spreadsheets that breaks it down into a couple different things that you can, your kids can capture. That'll get them into the game. That'll get you uh, some numbers you can look at after the fact the advantage on a, a live thing like that, and I guess iStat Folly and a few of the other ones, is you can look on, you, you know, you can see it in match, which is really helpful. Right. Right. Um, and again, like, it, it's just about how detailed the tracking you, you, you want to be, you know. Um, and I, I feel like more and more uh, with every year that goes by, it's, it's, um, I think it's less about where you hit the ball and, and more about which, which lineups are effective um, to hold serve, you know, and to side out quickly, you know, like um, the serve and pass battles become so much more um, mm -hmm. pertinent uh, in, in each high level match. Um, and, you know, funny enough, I, I think there was a volleyball coaches and trainers um, post uh, a few years back about how serving was only a skill that was taught in 2% or that took up about 2% of your practices. And um, like I, I, I took that to heart, like, is, is that true in, in my own practices? Is that true with what I do? Um, and uh, and now like serving passes, probably at least 50%, if not more of our practices, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's it, it, for, for us at Pacific, it comes down to, Siding out quickly and holding serve, you know, like where I think um, Gibbon, Coach Gibbons said that we were the best serving team in the in our conference, um, and that's really where a lot of our advantages that we need to press as being a shorter team, you know, not a team with, not with, with uh, less height than uh, other teams, 
Um, and that's really where hopefully we can score those three, four points um, and find that balance between serving aggressive and um, and lollipopping it over. You know, um, it's uh, and you see sometimes that it's, it's a different person every game. Sometimes you see a uh, somebody that's consistent over a longer period of time. Um, but the biggest thing is that should really affect where you start that next set and which rotation. Um, and again, like just, just seeing it firsthand on paper, um, not only on, sorry, on, on paper, the stats, but also seeing it with my own eyes in, in game, seeing those adjustments really, really make a difference. Um, it's, it's, again, it's, it's something that I was never aware of. Um, and to learn that, um, this year, it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, again, like, um, uh, stats can just be a lot of noise. You know, you can, you can look at blocking percentages, you can look at anything you want, but, um, again, depending on the culture and makeup of your team for us, serve and serve, receive and rotation info and, um, defending that first, uh, attack for the, uh, other side is just, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a paramount importance to, uh, to defend. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I just, it's, um, yeah, I, I would say like if, if you're going to use any of those programs like Solostat <coughs> or any of those other uh, uh, iPad or even pen and paper, like um, just ask yourself, you know, when you look at these numbers, is this going to affect or can if I pour my energy into this, um, is it going to affect the the score in real time with what I'm coaching and who I'm coaching? You know, um, if my team is not uh, a team that uh, – uses numbers very well, doesn't like to scout, doesn't like to chart. Um, maybe again, that's just an opportunity for you as a coach to, to get better at, uh, teaching that to your team and, um, uh, and, and maybe making them realize that, you know what, these numbers actually matter a lot more than I ever gave them enough credit for. Um, and it's, you'll, you'll see that, uh, some, some girls when they when they see these numbers and scouting reports and such, um, they they honestly they come alive a little bit. You know, they're like, oh shoot, I didn't know. You know, yeah. Um, and it's uh, again, it's it's one of those things. Everything's a skill, um, and they may not want to invest in that skill initially, but once you start winning and you start looking for that one percent difference, two percent difference, um, at the end of a important three or five set match you're going to realize that it was important for me to pour into specific parts of the analysis and numbers uh, versus just trying to make sense of everything, you know? Um, and again, like that's, that's, if there's anything that I've learned over the last three years doing data volley was that's it, you know, where, where are you going to focus your energy on? Yeah. And, and Dan's yeah, got a it, comment uh, for us. Go ahead. Well, I just, uh, you know, you can see Dan's comment. Uh, I think uh, there's a, another another convert, or not convert, but somebody who's looking at it more seriously than, than in, in the past, which is how we learn, right? Right. Right. And, you know, I, I would say that, you know, the, the more that I see the serve and pass battle uh, occurring at uh, higher levels, I mean, if you if you are a good serving team in, you know, four or more rotations, you are going to, you're going to cause fits for the other team. You know, like, again, if you, if you're up against a team that does a lot of coach toss intros uh, or, or some sort of first ball intro, that's not game. Like um, sometimes the best teams in the country, their, their main weakness is you serving the ball tough against them, making them move, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, once you can build confidence in your own team to win that serve and pass battle, um, Honestly, like one, two, three aces, you treat them like gold, you know, just like blocks. You know, your, your team doesn't have to work so hard on it. It's more of an individual skill than anything else. It's hard to do for sure. Um, but building that confidence into your team um, really will make a difference. And you'll start seeing that um, when you do side out, when you do point score one or two, three times, um, when you go back there, you start seeing that um, – you know, your, your, your offense is really only scoring a third of your points, maybe less. Um, and your, 
uh, your servers, your server and your server receiver are, are scoring the majority of the points for you, you know? So yeah, no, this, again, kind of one of those things that's just kind of a more of an eye opening experience. Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny that Dan was there because, you know, I, I try to get complicated with his trend lines. I did them for a couple of years, uh, even tried to make it into, uh, uh, piece of software that other people could use. Um, but it's when uh, I did those trend lines for my own teams that I saw that, you know, my perceived best server wasn't my, my, my strongest uh, serve received when the other team was starting out the, the match. Um, I, was, I was actually putting my team in, in a worse position um, by not tracking that or at least having those numbers or trends influence um, what was going on. So... Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything we want to show? We we talked yeah. about uh, maybe doing uh, some screen sharing, but uh, the conversation's gone well. I don't want to disrupt it, but is there anything we want to take a look at or or? Sure, I can show you the to... program, the volume itself, yeah. and, and uh, you know maybe how Pacific uses it, and we can kind of go. All right. That. Well, let's let's see if we can. Let me try this. I'm going to try this view, um, and if you share your screen, then I'll I'll get it. Uh, oh, you can't see this yet. Let me put this up. So we got a blank screen here and let me go find your screen real quick. There we go. And we can try that, I think. Yeah, it looks good. I can see it. Yeah, good to go. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, so again, these are these are uh, uh, the matches that we had uh, preseason, um, and you know I could just pick one of these, uh, any of these really. Um, so let's just pick this one here. Get Stephen F. Austin. So uh, again, um, uh, you can see with every option that they have here on the on on the left that. Uh, data volley has a ton of things that um, can give you and again like it, depending on what's important to you it already has these built-in worksheets uh, for you if you need it zone charts direction charts point analysis um, again i didn't really do zones or anything like that this year um, but something that um, you can see for us um, would be this uh, let's see greg greg's ipad this is uh this is another um this is another feature of Data Volley where you can um, have your own mobile network and transmit um, these stats uh, to other devices that are in your network. Um, that's here under the web client. Um, and, and honestly, if, uh, if you wanted to, somebody at, back home can be on that same network if you'd like. But uh, again, you can see here that we have our hitters up here, middles. Um, we have uh, setters, et cetera, and these are the numbers that they had. Uh, very good. Let's start over here. So you can again, you can kind of see here um, what the what the data can show you when you when you do input it into there. Um, hitting percentages here, point scoring off serve, uh, first ball side out, uh, effectiveness, different things like that. Um, if I wanted to, another thing that's important for us is. Uh, Rotation info. Here you can see uh, rotation one side out percentages, point scoring percentages, first ball side out. Um, and again, this is this is this is more of a sheet that here we would use compared to volumetrics, um, and then use it to uh, the practice plan for the week with uh, opponents that are coming up. Um, uh, and again, like a lot of numbers here, take from it um, what you want, um, what's important to you. 
you know, and for us, just this, this top box here with uh, passing averages, uh, perfect passes, pass, uh, pass goods, um, those things are huge for us to determine this, uh, the starting lineup. So uh, let me just put you through here real quick, um, a new match. So here you have um, the, the teams that uh, you play. You would here you would load, and these are preloaded rosters. You know, uh, let's say it's Pacific, Brigham Young, and then you're left with this uh, this box here to code. Um, you would set the lineups here first, uh, depending on what rotation they're starting in. For us, let's just say one, two, three, four, five, six. And for them, same thing. Okay, so you have their lineups here, the scores up here, etc. This right here um, is where you would code um, uh, with, uh, to show you real quick uh, how it translates. Let's just do some general statistics here. Um, I would normally wouldn't have a screen this big, um, but let's code a rally here to start. So volleyball shows who has serve, um, timeouts, points, etc. cetera. Um, so if I were to say here, uh, number one on our team is serving, you know, um, I could put the sub zone here. I could put the type of serve here if I wanted to. Um, and then I would identify the other team with, with this character uh, A uh, showing that um, they belong on the other side. Um, and I'm actually using a different computer here. So let's say number six is uh, receiving this ball and um, she receives it poorly. Ah, sorry. Um, she receives it poorly. Sorry guys, I'm using a different computer here. Yeah, That's it's right. got to be uh, it's got to be like having a different saxophone trying to play it. At, uh... <laughs> for sure, for sure. And so um, uh, he, there, I coded an ace for number uh, for number one on our side. So here you would see that this is her serving efficiency, etc. If I were to bring up BYU, showing that number six, they would show that number six um, was not able to um, to hold those serves. Yeah, well, again, using a different computer, so I apologize about that. Um, over here on the on the right is your coding list. Um, you can double click on it. Uh, red means that there's an error. Um, uh, and there's some error back there and, uh, that you, uh, that you should go back and and, and correct. Um, with the speed of the game, this is a really hard thing to do during. That's why uh, practicing um, and um, being accurate on your first attempt is, is real important. Um, but again, you can modify that code based on, on what you want to see. Um, and yeah, uh, that's, um, that's pretty much it. If you, um, if you want, again, you can um, generate uh, these worksheets here um, per player. If you want to take a look at one player in particular, how they did in the game. Um, you can also, uh, when with this video here, Again, it's, it's a feature that we don't use because we have volley metrics. Uh, we can stream in and uh, code our own match bit depending on the things that we want to see. Um, reports wise, you know, again, those, those are those are things that um, volley metrics does for us more than anything else. Um, and uh, I personally never open these things uh, at all um, because we have volley metrics work. You know, uh, we have that purchase for Pacific. Um, so uh, for us, um, again, whiteboard these uh, uh, these numbers here. Um, opponent passing, you know, and you can move these uh, wherever on the screen, depending where you want it. 
uh, general stats. So like, again, like it's, it's uh, your screen can look like um, just this uh, mix of, of numbers and data and uh, different things like this. Like you can make worksheets uh, as, compli as complex or as simple as you'd, you'd like them to. Um, you should have, uh, I would advise having some level of Excel uh, skill um, because when you do go in here, you can you can code these worksheets uh, to you know track anything you'd like. You know, again, this is how detailed you can be, um, but without knowledge uh, of how these work, it, it was difficult for me to uh, to crack into it. Um, I actually ended up um, I actually ended up um, copying and pasting off of a lot of other people's worksheets. Uh, to come up with uh, a design that was uh, that was usable for for myself, um, and uh, again, like um, you just find uh, what's important to you. Um, I, I I did speak with uh, Joe Trinzi, who uh, used to do the uh, the numbers for uh, Team USA, and um, you know he says that uh, they have uh, I think um, three or four uh, people doing data volley for in-game matches, one person for defense, one person for offense, another person for other things. Um, but one of the questions I asked them was for these worksheets, which is honestly probably what you're going to use the most for these worksheets, um, is there an online database that somebody can go into, pull what they need, maybe um, and maybe Frankenstein something together, um, especially if you're if you're newer to, uh, to Data Volley. Um, and unfortunately, there was not you know, and um, maybe that's something that uh, can be worked on in the future. Um, one, uh, I would say, the, the again, the strength of uh, what you have here is it can give you these numbers, um, but the more windows that you have open, um, the program I find um, needs to be upgraded a little bit um, to process this information a little bit faster. Um, if you have uh, this web client going and you have you know, these four um, other devices on your network, then what happens there is uh, the processing time goes down, wait, or it slows way down, and um, the next point might start before your last point finishes, uh, finishes uh, uh, compiling here in this, um, uh, in, in the data volley. So uh, some upgrades there I think are necessary. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I would say last thing is, um, Again, having more of a, a, a help, uh, online help with uh, how to get started, a beginner's guide, etc. I know uh, uh, Joe Trinity and Matt uh, did a, put a book together, a booklet together of, of, of uh, intro introducing new people into Data Volley. Um, I think it gets complex fairly quickly after the first few chapters. Um, honestly. I would say the best way to learn this is to find a mentor um, to, to teach you how to code, to teach you how to um, uh, to um, pair it with a with the video if, if that's something you do. Um, but again, that's just uh, these these uh, these numbers and such. This is uh, this is what's um, important for uh, Pacific, and this is what I see every match. So yeah, there you go. Fantastic. Well, Steve, we're coming up on the hour here. We um, are. Do, do you have uh, Do you have any last uh, questions or, or anything else? That you you know, from no, I, I think, you know, the, the beauty of having these conversations is just to get you thinking differently, you know, trying to think about, okay, um, what can I bring into my gym? And uh, what's, uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that you're thinking about, you know, what, what, what's useful to the players. You know, I, when I think BJ and I discussed this the other day, uh, offline, uh, you know, when I first started with stats, uh, it, it was more, I think the girls, especially the younger girls feel it more uh, punitively. Like it makes them feel bad and I don't want them to feel bad. I want them to feel good. I want them to be confident. And so using stats to help them do what they do better. And like in Carmelo, in your environment, when you show them what's working, then they, they get motivated to try to make it better. Now, I'm doing boys now and uh, I've got a server right now who, you know, just loves to 
just hammer the ball, but he can't control it. I mean, he's getting, right. you know, three or four out of 10 in. And it's like, right. okay. And, and the good news is he's starting to go, okay, let me see if I can develop a, a jump float. Let's see if I can develop some other things. It's going to be pretty random this year, I think, <laughs> but at least it helps him. So uh, I think these kinds of conversations help us think differently about what we do with our players. Yeah. And I, I would say, um, you know, use the data over a longer period of time, you know, show, mm. show where you started, show, show where you're heading to, um, and, and have a goal, you know, that's, that's, that's huge. You know, I, I hear that more and more is, um, we, we give, we try to train these players. We try to give them direction, but we never give them a destination. Um, or at least the destination is, is added after we have more information, you know, um, do, do your cauldrons, you know, do your uh, in-game competition so that, um, uh, players again can be motivated by their numbers, and and you can track these things over time, uh, and and I think you'll start seeing a lot more buy-in from from the players, uh, and I think that'll translate into a more competitive culture. So, yeah. Well, thanks for being with us, BJ. Got anything to wrap up? We really appreciate your time, Carmelo. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, this is great. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's it's helped me. Uh, understand a little bit and I'll be able to uh, we practice later today <laughs> so I can <laughs> take some of this information back to uh, uh, to our coaching staff and say you know here's here's what it does do you want to um, do you think we can gain from this is this something that you would like to look at and uh, and, and that it's it's really informative so yeah again thanks a lot for your time no you're welcome I'm sorry that the uh, the data volley was a different computer and didn't have all the settings that I, I had on there. I apologize. But uh, for the most part, That's uh, right. I had a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed the discussion and, and thanks for having me. Okay. Well, with that, we'll wrap up and uh, we'll be looking at something next week, hopefully. And uh, we had a few folks join us today. So the, the, uh, the, the live, the live viewers are growing uh, and you know, uh, if nothing else, we get a lot out of it. And hopefully uh, the folks who watch it after the fact will get a lot out of it as well. So yeah. thanks. I'm going to sign us off here and uh, we'll see you later. All right. Thank you.